What's up, guys? I lost track of what day it is for Winter Cut, but I think it's Winter Cut Day 16. Maybe 17? Actually, you know what would be even better? I could just say it now. Right, Mom? In, mm -hmm. in my video, I could just put whichever one's right. So, yeah, absolutely. today is Winter Cut Day 17. Okay, there you go. Now I can just put whichever one's right. Absolutely. Very smart. Huh. Now, guys, you might be thinking... This breakfast is too big, and I'm gonna be honest, you, you, you're actually probably right this time. It's pretty freaking big. And uh, I don't even know if you can call this a cut anymore. <laughs> Just because of the sheer amount of um, cheating that has been done this past uh, Christmas and Christmas Eve. And nonetheless, we're still gonna get carbs in before the workout. We have Godzilla here. He says hi. That's probably, that's gotta be the best gift ever. You guys don't even understand. This is a collector's item. You guys already know how I feel about carbs. Get in plenty before your workout. It's going to significantly benefit you, your pump, your performance, your endurance. Get in electrolytes. Get in caffeine, probably. Um, just do all those things, man. Those things will work. Anyway, though, we're going to be hitting chest. Hopefully the wide grip stuff that I've been doing is going to really pay off in the long run. I'm, I just feel like there's something to it, you know, whether I can prove it to a T or not. Wide grip definitely has improved my chest development. Whether or not I can attribute that to just progressive overload from general chest movements or from, you know, wide grip also a little bit, you know. Because that's the thing, guys. Regardless of what grip you do, your outcome is going to be very similar. Um, unless it's like ultra close or ultra wide, then yeah, you're not going to... You're going to get very different results from that. But I'm saying generally for like any any movement, really, it's not like foot stance for a squat is going to make the, all the difference in the world. And it's going to, you know, one stance is going to make your quads gigantic and one stance is going to make your quads tiny. It's like both will get your quads in the long run. One may be more than the other. Right, and that's kind of the whole thing I'm doing with wide grip here on bench press. We're looking for a potential boost in gains long term, and that should really help bring up my chest proportionally compared to other body parts. So, I think if there's one thing that I really want to get bigger, it would be my chest. So, that's kind of the goal today. So, we're going to slam down these carbs. Get some electrolytes in and then some caffeine here in the Merry Christmas mug. Now, guys, it was actually Christmas yesterday, so Merry Christmas. Merry late Christmas, I guess. And, um, yeah, that's it. Also, I slept, I slept almost 15 hours last night, so I think this is gonna, it is gonna probably be a more well rested workout, that's for sure. So, All right, guys, we are nearly at the gym, probably about, I don't know, eight minutes out or something. And uh, the plan is when we get in there, warm up a little bit, do Smith Machine Incline Press. The goal with Smith Machine Incline for me is to really open up my pecs, get an insane stretch, right, in the majority of the the majority of the tension is going to be in the bottom portion, right? The bottom to mid range. And the thing is, when your arms are extended out that far, there's more tension uh, generated in the pecs because your pecs are a shoulder adductor, right? And you're putting your arm in a really disadvantaged position, making it to where your pecs really have to work against a very long external moment arm whereas when you're here there's not as much tension because you're bringing everything in really close now in terms of what might activate the chest the best or what might line up with its leverage is the best it's probably about here at about 45 degree shoulder angle but here I'm going a little bit above right and just really focusing like I said on that stretch position and we're going out super far so, and going out really far is also going to be a little bit of extra external rotation of the shoulder, which stretches the pec more. 
and it's also just really good for overall mind-muscle connection. Now, is mind-muscle connection the goal? No. Is pump the goal? Not at all. You're going to get those things more, though, when you do bench this way, in my opinion, depending on the person. Because somebody might really like the way, you know, a mid-grip feels on the stretch for their pecs. And somebody like me might really like the way a wide-grip feels, so it just depends. So, after that, uh, hopefully we get more than six reps, by the way. I'm hoping to get seven or eight, which would be really nice, because I've, I've never got seven or eight wide grip. I've only ever gotten six, which was last week. So... After that, we do decline. I can go a lot heavier on that, which is cool. Same deal, wide grip. Uh, I realized last week I was getting a little bit of weird shoulder crunching. It wasn't really painful, but it still felt weird. But I think it's because I was still setting up for it like it was a traditional bench or an incline press. But as you know, a decline angle is way different than an incline angle. So uh, my one buddy gave me the idea to set up for it like it's a dip instead of setting up for it like it's a bench press. So instead of, whoa, instead <laughs> of putting, Sorry. here, good. Instead of putting my shoulder back uh, and down really far, I'm gonna put my shoulders just back and maybe slightly up. <clears throat> Cause that's gonna provide a better and more stable base for decline pressing. Uh, I'm not saying that that's necessarily anatomically better or superior or more smooth but I think that that will make more sense for my uh, pressing angle. So after that, we are going to do flies, then pullovers, probably one set of each, maybe two. The reason I say one is because we know that the maximum hypertrophic volume you can do for a muscle group going to failure would be six sets of five reps roughly. So that's going to be 25 stimulating reps. Any more than that, you're not really getting any extra benefit. So with chest day, I notice I'm doing a bit more sets, getting more volume in, but believe it or not, it's working for me. So it makes me wonder, have I been going to failure? Maybe not. Have I been going to failure on some movements? Probably not. Like flies, it's very hard to go to failure on. Uh, and that is task failure. Like, of course, I can make it to where I can't push anymore in that same range of motion, but oftentimes I'll start cheating as the set goes on. And so it's not really a measurable task because it's, it's just kind of very, it's variable throughout the set. Um, but anyway, though, moving on from that because it's kind of a random subject. Flies, pullovers. Um, that guy's backing out for no reason, very aggressively. Uh, And, um, dude, what are people doing? Dude? Yeah, people are driving crazy today, man. This guy was nice. What do you think, Joe? What do I think about what exactly? Just what do you think? What's going on in that noggin of yours? Did you pump? Outside of getting a good pump. Lift like Tom Platts. Yeah, he knows how it is. This guy knows how it is. Gotta lift like Tom Platts. So we're gonna skip chest day. We're actually gonna do legs. <sighs> no, we're gonna do legs in between sets of chest. The only place to go from failure is to win. How you doing, man? What's your name? Sean. Sean, nice to meet you. I'm Max. Max, nice to meet you. I'm checking. Yeah, two Max. I'm fucking. He's rowing. I'm rowing, man. Hey. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. I'm the other one. But I heard it was a lot better if you guys stayed in Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I gotta do I think that was the most packed tension I've ever felt. That felt pretty insane. I might take out uh, dumbbell flies. 
not because I don't like them, but because I think it might be too much volume to recover from. chest with the bar though because I don't know if it's the same for everybody else but my chest tends to bruise pretty easily from a bar so that would tell me I'm probably not controlling it um, at the bottom and as much as I'd want to so honestly here what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little less weight try to control that bottom even more Yo, would you mind spot me for this? I don't know if I'm gonna get it by the way. I got it last week, but. You wanna lift off? Uh, nah, I should be good. This man took a whole bench upstairs just so we could do Smith Machine Incline today. You know, I actually think this is this is probably my favorite shoulder movement for side delts by far. Because obviously it's super loadable, guys. And if you watch me, you know that that's the number one thing I complain about. You know, how loadable is the movement? How much can you progress in it realistically? You know, and like with dumbbell side raises, unless you're, I'm, I'm being quite honest, unless you're a roid head, you're probably going to be doing at most 45s of very strict form, which is the only way you really should do side raises, is with very strict form. Or at least a form that you know you can be consistent with every week, not just cheating when you feel like it. And, uh, you know, with that said, with this, the form is very consistent, unless you rock your body super back and forth, which even then, if that's your form, stick with it consistently. But I know that my form is gonna be like this. No matter what I do, it's gonna be very fixed. And obviously this is extremely loadable compared to other movements. 
it's gonna hit my traps, my traps, my side delts. It's gonna be great long term. I can feel it. But plus, when you combine the straps with this movement, uh, it kind of eliminates that awkward grip that you have and weird like pinch feeling in your nerves or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if you guys get that when you do stuff like this. It's kind of weird. Anyway, I gotta test that. Super build elimination. We're going for it. The trap pump is a little bit ridiculous right now. Uh, I'm not even like flexing them. This is kind of absurd. I don't know if it looks as ridiculous on camera as it does in person right now. My traps are just huge looking. And I'll tell you this right now. Your genetic strong point, you may be aware of early on. I knew that my traps would be a pretty good strong point from whenever I was literally about three years old. My traps insert pretty high for no reason. And uh, I was always like, kind of like a pyramid. I was built like a pyramid. And then when I hit puberty, my shoulders just like grew like a ton outwardly. So, you know. Anyway. A lot of this is just instinct, man. People always talk about training with instinct, and I think you could take it too far and make every workout really weird and abnormal and switch up the form every time and like do things that don't make sense. Or you can say, okay, my instinct is probably not a good idea to you know, do this thing that everybody says to do. And if it works for you, it works for you. You know, do what you like. I stick with what works for me, and you guys should too. The secret that people don't want you to know is straying to failure on something that you enjoy. That's the secret. And that's that's literally all you need to know. There's no secret exercise to grow. Ah. Uh. Uh. <sighs> uh. I think the shoulder pump is pretty apparent at this point. The plan here is to just get a heavy tricep push down to make a decent form. Our goal here is to get a great long head stimulus. So we're going to keep the shoulder fixed the whole time. At least we're going to attempt it. No cheating, none of this back and forth with the shoulders. We want to keep them fixed as much as we can, right? I might end up looking more like this, maybe a little bit of shoulder flexion at the bottom, but our goal here, like I said, is to stay stable and fix it, so. Same thing I'm used to doing, just over here in the whole side.
That little motion at the end there, where we pull our shoulder forward. The reason we do that is because the triceps long head does something called shoulder extension. So, the reason why people do overhead movements to begin with is just because it stretches the long head more. Now, is that beneficial necessarily? I don't know. But I do know that that's one of its functions, is to, shoulder, is to do shoulder extension. Now, since we know that, we can do shoulder extension from here to here because the long head has great leverage there. Huh? I'm just gonna stay closed this time. Thumbball pullovers, man. 75 pounds. We're going for a PR, I guess. I got a Lord of the Rings clip in here that I screen recorded and converted to an MP3. I really like this scene. It's where Gandalf fights the Balrog. I just feel crazy about something. Anyway, let's go. a lot more watery these days after all those uh, holiday cheat meals so to speak probably gained honestly like I'm thinking around 12 pounds of just straight up water minimum because uh, I mean honestly the past week I've just been pretty much eating like dog crap now I know what I'm telling you guys about the caloric limit and everything, and that's what matters. But uh, lately I've been going over that. So <laughs> that's just a little thing that's been happening. But we're going to do some back poses, then we'll get to the car.
we are on our way out from the gym. Today was really good chest pump. Not gonna lie, was a little shocked that I was so much weaker on incline bench. But that just goes to show you, uh, it's very little of it has to do with the sleep you get on that day or the amount of food you've been eating leading up, you know, a couple days beforehand or whatever. Most of it has to do with just motor unit recruitment, uh, which can be very heavily changed by your style of training or your volume. So today we did three sets of incline bench, two sets of decline, and then one set of pullovers, and that was enough for chest. That was six sets. That was a perfect workout. And, uh, you know, sometimes you walk out of the gym doing a traditionally low volume like that, and you feel like you didn't do enough, but in reality you did, you know? So that was solid. Uh, it was awesome. The new high pole Smith machine movement was also incredible. I really loved how, how it felt and how loadable it was. Um, you know, it's one of those things you see somebody else doing and you think, oh, that looks stupid. And then you try it and you're like, oh my gosh, that looks awesome. Or it feels awesome. All right, boys, so not gonna lie. I made a pretty big mistake today when I was recording. I used the receiver mic instead of the transmitter mic. So it sounded like I was a mile away. And uh, you know, it's whatever, things happen. Different problems I gotta get used to when recording. But I uh, figured I'd make up for it with a voiceover, so I hope that's good enough. But either way, today was a great chest day. I had a quesarito from Sheets. So at this point, man, I can barely call it a cut. But that is what I'm doing. It's just sometimes it's on and off. Sometimes there's cheat days. Now, will I be more disciplined during the next cut? Absolutely. But one thing I can start, especially with the new year, is say, okay, there's no more nasty junk food in the house. Well, great, amazing tasting junk food in the house. So it's going to be even easier to adhere. The time that I find is easiest to adhere to the cut is when I have a lot of chicken around the house, okay? Rotisserie chicken from Costco, uh, you know, chicken breast, whatever else, frozen chicken breast. It's all real easy to cook, okay? Real easy to get together and make. So, and on top of that, dude, it's so high protein and so low calorie. You can have so much of it, stay full, have your protein in for the day, and you're good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, mainly the new angle. We got a new tripod, so that's nice. Aside from the uh, mistake of recording with the receiver, it's been great so far, so <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.